Hello, in this video I will introduce quaternions, an alternative to represent 3D rotations, widely used in robotics, but also in other fields such as computer graphics. The aims of the presentation are to understand the concept of a quaternion, as well as its elements. We will learn how to perform basic rotations and show some simple examples. We will also learn how to perform rotation composition operations, inverse of a rotation and the rotation of a point with a quaternion representation. Also, the conversion between quaternions and rotation matrices. Finally, we will analyze the advantages and disadvantages of using quaternions compared to rotation matrices. A quaternion is built with a real component and three imaginary components orthogonal to the real axis. Therefore, a quaternion has four coordinates, qw, qx, qy and qz, although sometimes we will also refer to these coordinates as q0, q1, q2 and q3. The real coordinate has been highlighted in red, while the imaginary coordinates have been highlighted in orange, so you can distinguish them. Anyway, we will represent the orientation with a quaternion with a vector with its four coordinates. Quaternions fulfill an important property, and its norm is unitary. Numerically, this has more stable numerical properties than rotation matrix normalization. Because rotation matrix normalization, we need to ensure that the determinant is one, but also the rows and the cones are orthonormal. Quaternions can be seen as the rotation of an angle, theta, in this case, through a given axis u. A unit vector multiplied by the sine of the semi-angle will provide us with the imaginary components of the quaternion, while the cosine of the semi-angle is the real component of the quaternion, as you can see here. The basic rotations are rotation along the axis of the reference system that is, rotations around x, y and z axis. We can represent these rotations using uh, precisely the uh, angle vector formula that I previously shown. With these basic rotations, we can perform rotation compositions and obtain any 3D orientation, as we will see. Indeed, the quaternion multiplication is equivalent to the rotation of one reference system with respect to another, and this is the basis of rotation composition. It can be shown that given two quaternions, the first representing the orientation uh, of the uh, first reference frame, and the second one, the quaternion uh, representing the orientation of the second reference frame with respect to the previous one, the first one, the orientation of the second reference frame with respect to the global reference frame is the multiplication of these two quaternions. And this operation can be computed as indicated here. The operator that appears between both quaternions represents actually the quaternion multiplication operator. In total, this operation involves 16 multiplications and 9 additions. Thus, we can perform the composition of rotations by performing multiplication operations between quaternions. If we do the rotation with respect to the fixed reference frame, we must pre-multiply the basic rotation with the current orientation defined by a quaternion in the previous, previous iteration to obtain the quaternion after the new rotation. In the same way, if we perform the rotation with respect to the mobile reference frame, the operation that we need to perform is the post-multiplication between quaternions. As you can see, the order of the multiplication between quaternions is important as it was also in the case of rotation matrices, since this quaternion multiplication operator is not commutative. So now let's see an example in which we apply three turns. First, a turn around x-axis, then around y-axis and in the, in, the, in the opposite direction in this case, and finally we apply a turn around the z-axis. All of them with respect to the fixed reference frame. In this case, we must pre-multiply the basic rotations and for this reason, they appear in the opposite order as we apply them. The resulting uh, quaternion multiplication sequence is as indicated in the figures, 
uh, th and this represents each of the terms uh, that we have applied in order to get to the final uh, resulting or orientation. To get to the numerical results that I show here, we must apply the quaternion multiplication operator that I have previously explained using basic rotations defined by the qx, qy and qz quaternions as you can see here. These quaternions indeed are obtained from, remember, the uh, angle uh, vector representation using uh, the, the exactly the angle that I, I'm explaining at the beginning, I'm showing here at the beginning. So similarly, we can perform rotation operations with quaternions, but in this, this time uh, the terms are with respect to the mobile reference frame, which means that every time we apply a turn, then we will apply uh, the rotation with respect to the new reference frame. So in this case, the operations that we must perform is the post multiplication of quaternions, obtaining different results compared to the previous example. Because in this case, the axes of the mobile reference frame are different in their direction with respect to the previous case. To obtain the inverse of a rotation, then we use the quaternions, uh, or in quaternions it's a very simple operation because we just simply have to compute the conjugate quaternion, which implies that the last three elements are just simply negated. We can easily verify that both left and right multiplications of the qu uh, conjugated quaternion makes the resulting orientation equivalent to a zero rotation operation. If we want to perform the rotation operation to a point or vector, we must first construct the quaternion associated with the point and pre-multiply it with the quaternion we want to rotate and post-multiply it with the conjugated uh, quaternion. Formally, the uh, quaternion of a point should be normalized and then we should undo the operation, but the fact or the, this aspect is not uh, strictly necessary since the, this operation is usually implemented converting the quaternion into a rotation matrix using the expression that I show here. This one is one of the most efficient ways to perform the point rotation operation. The expression actually can be derived from the quaternion multiplication operator and its conjugate and factoring the elements of the point. The conversion from the quaternion Two rotation matrix has a cost of 9 multiplications and 12 additions, while the point rotation has a cost of 9 multiplications and 6 additions. On the other hand, the conversion of a rotation matrix to a quaternion is trickier. We must first check the trace of the rotation matrix. If this is greater than 0, then we can apply the first uh, case that we provide here in the first expression to compute the quaternion. However, if the trace is zero or numerically close to zero, then we should apply one of the other three expressions, depending on, the, on their conditions. In that case, we must identify which is the largest element in the trace and apply the corresponding formula. Obviously, I put all this formula here just for a reference, but you don't need to remember these expressions, just Google them in case you need them. To finish with this presentation, I would like to make a comparison between rotation matrices and quaternions, which will lead us to obtain a set of advantages and disadvantages regarding the use of quaternions. You can see that its storage is much less than a rotation matrix, the rotation composition operator, which is very common in robotics, involves fewer operations than if we do the same operation but with rotation matrices. However, uh, the rotation of a point, uh, as we need to compute first uh, the rotation matrix, then this is obviously uh, as a more expensive operation in terms of the amount of required multiplications and additions. However, uh, we can apply this for a set of points with the same orientation, then we hardly notice the increase of, in the cost of the operations. The inverse of a rotation is also easier in quaternions than in the rotation matrix, since it is only involving changing the sign of the, uh, in this case, imaginary elements of the quaternion. Also, an important property is that the rotation matrix normalization is more complex 
than in the case of the quaternion vector normalization. And this operation might be necessary in order to obtain numerical stable results. Therefore, and as conclusions, we can say that the notation of quaternions is more compact and computationally more efficient. Furthermore, we do not oh, they do not uh, uh, present the gimbal lock problem as in the case of the Euler angles, and they are numerically quite stable. As disadvantages, we can say that quaternions are more complex to visualize, and the rotation of a point in this case we have seen that is slightly or could be slightly more uh, expensive than compared to the rotation matrix uh, representation. Well, in this video we have introduced quaternions and we have seen some of their main properties and uh, operators as well as analyze the advantages and disadvantages of their use compared to rotation matrices. Thank you very much.